going to put one arm across our chest and the other one's going to come in front. We're going to stretch out the forearm. And switch. Then we're going to put one hand behind our head. We're going to push down on our elbow. And switch. Then we're going to spread our legs apart. We're going to reach up and go to one side. And we're going to come back up and switch. And we're going to come up to the middle. We're going to go down. If you can touch the ground, try to move your hands, go backwards, and reach behind you. Alright, we're going to sit down. We're going to do butterflies. We're going to pull our legs in close, push down on our knees. Then we're going to stick one leg out. We're going to reach. Make sure your knee is nice and straight. And switch. Then we're going to stick one leg out in front of us. The other is going to go over and we're going to do our Hollywoods. And switch. Okay, so we're going to put one leg behind us, and the one in front of us is going to be bent. The one behind us is going to be straight. We're going to lean forward. And then we're going to switch. Now we're going to stand up, we're going to take one leg, we're going to come up, and switch. Okay, then we're going to put both hands behind our back, and we're going to grab our hands together if we can. circles, so we're going to start and go one way. Then switch <laughs> and go the other direction. Okay, and we're going to do arm circles. And we're going to stick our hands out and we're going to go forward. Go backwards. Okay, and now we're going to do our knee circles. We'll go out. Again. And we're going to switch. Take both legs forward. We're going to reach. If you have trouble uh, reaching for your toes, you can bend your legs, grab your toes, and then reach forward. Okay. And we're going to spread our legs apart and we're going to reach for the middle. Okay. And then we're going to go to one side.
Okay, this segment, let's go to writing stance for a moment. Go to chamber, listen to your watch, front block, outer forearm block, other side, front block, outer forearm block. Application, fighting stance, the first punch comes, front block, second punch comes, outer forearm block. Again, step back, front block, outer forearm block. One more time, front block, outer forearm block. Let's switch sides. So you see it from this angle, and front block, outer forearm block. Front block, outer forearm block. Practice that at home. Uh, if you can find a willing partner, be careful with your blocks. When your twist comes around and you block, don't go full force, go, go light, or your partner will quit practicing with you. You'll find that out real quick. We're going to talk about separating and wedging blocks. So let's just talk about them for a minute and their differences. So turn and face the camera, go to your chamber. Wedging block. Come down like we're giving ourselves a wedgie and we come up and the impact happens on the outside here. Or in this case, it's actually the inner forearm, this being the outer forearm if we're out like this. Okay? So that's wedging. S separating. We're actually right here. As you can see, our um, distance we're traveling when, before we strike is a little bit different. It's smaller and our angles are a little bit different. Now, how do these actually work? So, if I'm going to say, let's say a choke, and we're going to do wedging block. Okay, so that works just fine. Uh, lapel grab, wedging block, and that works fine too. You'll see different people like different blocks. I like the wedging because I can really, my momentum and the way my arms are, I can strike real hard that way and it hurts. My separating block's not as strong as others and I think it just depends on your muscle structure. So the separating block comes up and strikes out. Hmm, they both work very similar. You will find that you like one versus the other and it may be what you're doing next. So let's say we're gonna do a wedging block and grab and a knee strike, or it could be a head strike if we wedge and then do a head knee to the head. Yeah, but you'll grab my head instead of my shoulders. Wedging, grab the head and a knee strike. Okay, your, your hands are just in the right place. Separating block, you go. Separating, so he's going into a headlock there. He can easily grab the head and do a, a strike. Um, let's see how that works. Separating, you can grab and strike. Oh, nice elbow strike, okay? So you'll find what you're comfortable with, what you like. As we know, in any kind of uh, altercation that we have, we're gonna run home to what we're comfortable with and we like. So, we have a whole lot of blocks. But to be honest, if someone's going to do a uh, fighting stance, you're in a ready stance, and a punch to the face. He likes grasping block, which is fine. Uh, rising block works for that. Uh, so it's just whatever you like. And how strong the opponent is. If I'm stronger than him, he may not go for a grasping block. He may step in, rising block of some kind, and take me down. Okay. So there's some insight onto the wedging and the separating blocks. So continuing on our pressure points, we're going to go right to the next one, which is infraorbital. It is right here under the nose. You can do a lot of things, but we're going to take our hand, more of a ridge hand, and apply pressure inward at a 45 degree angle. You can do it if they're sitting down. Just put your hand at the back of their head if they're sitting down. Do this and guarantee they'll get right up for you. The next one is sublingual. Well, lingual is Latin for language or tongue. So this is under the tongue. You can do it with two fingers on each side and just apply pressure and they come back. You can also lift them right up the, off the ground that way too. And our next one is super scapula. That is this muscle that runs right here on the back. It's kind of the Vulcan neck pinch from Star Trek. I get points for getting that in there. So we're going to do the C clamp and you can take them down this way. 
That's the next three of the uh, pressure points. Continuing with pressure points, we have two new ones today. The first one is the clavicle notch or the throat notch. So you have your collarbones that come here right at the throat and there's this little soft spot there. So you can use it to move someone back. Or if you're in a bear hug, arms trapped, you can work one hand up and push them back. If they aren't doing what you want, what you do is you push back, wrap your fingers down and rub on the inside of the breastbone. They will move for sure at that time. Like that there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next one is the accessory nerve, or we like to call this the funnel. So, you have your super scapulas right here. We're going to strike right at the joint of the neck to your shoulders. We're going to come up. This is going to make their legs collapse, and if we do it hard enough, a uh, total reset gives you about a minute to run away screaming. So, we come up and down. <laughs> Pressure point section, we have the upper perineal, and it is, here's our waist, we're going to, and here's our knee. We're going to come right in between, this muscle's going to bulge right here, and it should be right about there. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Okay, this one here, watch his hips as we strike his, his knee here, if it'll show. See how it's bending, see how it's collapsing. If we were to hit that hard, our palm heel, Either one, that's going to cause the leg to collapse for a few moments. The other one is the lower perineal, and here's our ankle, here's our knee. We see the nice calf coming right down here. It's going to be right about there. Yep, mm -hmm. there it is. So, again, here's our knee, here's our ankle. You have the, turn this sideways here. We have our calf coming right down here, ankle, knee. Here's the calf. We're going to come right at its bulge here on the back and strike right there. So upper perineal, lower perineal. These can be done. I see these used if we're fighting. We can do it with a kick. It's not very precise. Let's say he struck at me some way with this. We can strike. The lower one, I see this more in two different applications. I'm in a bad position and I'm down here for some reason and I'm going to strike. The other one is, uh, let's switch for a minute, put this as your back leg. The kick comes and I catch and I strike. Okay, so there's two more pressure points for your arsenal. Pressure points in this section is three. We have the upper femoral, which is right about here. This is the one that we have self-defense where we strike here, 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 and here. This can be used other ways. So here's our waist, here's our knee. It's on the inside of the leg right about there. See that twitch? That means you're, you're there. Yep. This is also uh, a very main uh, artery that runs through. If this is cut, uh, it's bad news. We're going to come down the leg, staying on the inside, and here is the lower uh, femoral. And here's our knee. It's going to be right about there. Yep, felt a twitch. Right about there. So this can be a good hammer fist. We're on the ground. Things aren't going very well. We have three strikes. He's, he's thrown me down. Come here. So, I have three main points I can go for. Crotch, probably mine, but if for some reason maybe he's twisted his body, well, that's no good. That's even a better target. But here's the upper femoral and the lower femoral. We're going to come on down. And the last one is the tibial. So, here's our inside of the leg coming right down. Here's the calf muscle, go right up above the calf muscle, and it's right there. That can be struck, probably. Grabbing, not so much. Those are big, beefy leg muscles. So we're going to strike them hard, hammer fist. You can do a crane beak. crane beak, and that works too. So there's three more for you, and uh, we're getting close to being done. 
So that concludes all the pressure points on the first section of nerve control and pressure points. Um, pick out your favorites. The ones you see you using the most and practice those. Can you practice all of them? Certainly. The other thing is as we are doing our strikes and preparing for our brown and black belt testing, keep thinking when we're doing our strikes, uh, finishing and whatever, so the punch comes and here it is, where are we going to strike? Is it just to the face? Or are we going to strike to a pressure point and then finish it off? Keep these in mind uh, and utilize the pressure points. Here's the 18 seizing hands, all punishing Zach. Starting with thumb block. Again, this is at the webbing, down. And then moving on to chin off, finger lock down. Drop them into the webbing, two fingers on their knuckles, take them down. Chin off, finger carriage. Bring them up, thumb at their knuckles, grab the fingers, hold, bring their heels up. Wipe board. Turn and push down. Monk carries the log. And break. Old man carries the basket. Bicep takedown. Monk teeters log on rock. Monk leans on the log. Drunken master. Monk smells the flowers. Two thumbs wrist lock. Rising sun. Untwist. Grab the fingers like we're shaking hands. Old man comes out of the cave. Drop down. Against. Dragon holds a pearl. Monk chops the log. White snake spits the venom. Snake around. Strike the pressure point. Lion sees self in water. Pull the elbow, push the hand. Unicorn seeks the path. Arm bar. Grab, apply pressure, and twist. Five animal form. Tiger dragon into hiding. Black tiger claw method. Single tiger comes out of the cave. White snake spits its poison. Coiling snake. Piercing venom. White crane spreads its wings. Reincarnation of the fulfilled crane. Scoop the fish from the sea. Dragon holds the pearl. Splashing palm. Pounding wave. Pull the bow. Shoot the arrow. The third section of rolling is front roll to back roll. So shoulder roll going forwards, followed right up with a back roll into a fighting position. Again, forward, right back into the back roll, up to a fighting position. Keep practicing that one after you've mastered the front roll, mastered the back roll, let's put them together. Our next fall we're going to work on is twist fall. So, what's your first thing? You're right, tuck. Your right arm comes out, you're going to twist up and crumple down. You're going to roll on your left side if your right arm's out. Again, most important thing is tuck. Put your right arm out, twist, and fall on your left side like a banana and roll. Okay, let's do this one more time. So, tuck, left arm out, twist, and become your banana on your left side. What this is used for is our hip throws. So, we can go from the beginning. He's in a fighting stance. We're going to block, soften him up. I'm going to step, I'm going to put my hips right against his hips. His elbow is elbow up. This is the most important thing for your partner. If we were to throw him with the elbow down, you're going to break this arm. So, 
elbow up. I'm going to grab the shoulder of his gi and I'm just going to twist him around my body, around my hips, and put him down. So I'm here, all I'm doing is lifting him up, sticking my rear end in the ear, twisting him down. Let's do this one more time. We're going to start from our position, step. If we didn't do a softening blow, we can do it right here. Check your elbow. As we practice, and this is new to us, as soon as I grab the gi, if he hasn't tucked already, he should tuck. I'm going to bend and throw him over. That's a twist fall and the hip throw. Okay, to sharpen your sparring skills some, let's talk about shuffling. So we're going to shuffle forward. What it is is your back foot replaces the spot your front foot is and it moves on forward. Again, and from the side. So we're in our fighting stance, just real simple. The front foot moves forward, the back foot takes the same place. Shuffle forward, shuffle back, shuffle forward, shuffle back. Okay. Step two, we're going to shuffle forward and thrust kick our, with our front leg. Shuffle. If you notice in say Zach, he does his shuffle, his front leg comes up and then goes immediately into the kick. So practice that so you don't set that front leg down before it's kicked. Shuffle and kick. Let's go for a side perspective. Shuffle and kick. And we step forward. Shuffle, kick, and step forward. One more time. As we're doing this, we can make a nice drill of it. Shuffle, kick, back shuffle. Shuffle, kick, back shuffle. See how fast you can do it. How many times can you do it in a minute? Okay, step three. We're going to shuffle, kick, step forward, punch. Let's do two punches. Shuffle, kick, punch, punch. Shuffle, kick, punch, punch. How about from the side? Shuffle, kick, punch, punch. Shuffle, kick, punch, punch. Shuffle back. Shuffle, kick, punch, punch. Shuffle back. Keep practicing. The faster and more accurate you get with this, your sparring will go up considerably. Okay, we're going to do uh, showing a few other locks here from a single hand grab. Actually, we'll do it from two hand grabs. I'm going to make knife hand, wax on, and push down. From here, I'm going to, this is called look in the mirror. I'm going to look in the mirror, come across, grab the thumb, start twisting down and around in my helper hand until they tap out. Again, we're grabbed. I'm going to wax on and push down. Bring my hand up to create a mirror that I can look into, come around, grab the thumb, helper hand comes and grabs the meaty part of the outer hand and twists. The other one, single hand grab, I'm going to come around, I'm going to grab the pinky, peel it off, grab the thumb area, twist, and those are your outer and inner wrist locks. We're going to do finger lock down joint. You can get to it in any number of ways, but here's where we want to end up. We're going to have more of an L shape. We're going to put their two fingers, you can do one or two, right in the web of our thumb. The other two fingers go right on the knuckle joint. We're going to take our thumb and push it this way. At the same time, we're taking our index and our middle finger on the joints and pushing down, making kind of a circular motion, and this will bring our attacker to their knees. Finger lock down. Finger lock up can be done with one or two fingers. You can get to it in a variety of ways, but this is how we're going to end up. We wish our index finger to be right against the knuckle joint, our thumb 
is at their second joint of their fingers. We're going to raise them up. We're going to take our index finger and push up. At the same time, we're going to use our thumb and pull their fingers down. As we do this, notice their heels come up off the floor. When that happens, your opponent is now immobile. They can't make a good strike against you. They can't do anything. They have no balance. Finger lock up. Two thumbs wrist lock. Normally it's from a single grab of some kind. We're going to come, we're going to grab the pinky finger. We're going to peel it off so the grasp is let go. Then we're going to put both thumbs on the back of the hand and our two index fingers are right at the joint of the wrist. We're going to be making a movement like this with both hands, pushing the hand or the palm back to the arm at the same time pulling the wrist joint down in a circle. As we make that movement, we force the attacker to bend over to keep the pressure off of his wrist. Two thumbs wrist lock. 